ranking you give us the uh, the update on the kicking competition? I know Eddie's been out these last couple of days, but how it was going up till now? It's going really well. I think that uh, both of them kicked well. Um, obviously, they made all their kicks the other night. Um, I have no concerns about either of them kicking out the back of the end zone at any time. Both of them have plenty of leg strength, so it's going to be real interesting to see how it falls out. Yeah, he's he's learning just like you know everybody, all the young guys that haven't had to do it much, or even some older guys that we're asking to do it. You know, um, you know it's different when you get out there and you're not used to doing all those things, and and uh, you know that's something that any any three, four, five receiver has to has to play. Any three, four, five running backs, you know, safety, corner, any of them, they all have to contribute because you only have such a little number of guys on game day, and so. Um, you know, but I do think he's trying. He's, he's getting better every day, and, and you know that's what we ask of him. Jermaine Johnson seemed to have a nice block on the kickoff return by Braxton. How unusual is it for a first round edge rusher to be playing, and how much in, in that role, and how much do you expect to use him? Um, you know, we'll see how it plays out and what his defensive role is, right? Um, <clears throat> but I think that. You know what's really good about um, you know this whole entire draft class, and and they they've come in and, and bought into anything we've asked them to do, and Jermaine specifically. Um, you know he's he's getting better every day. He's working his butt off, and he and he's he'll do anything that I ask of him, and and uh, you know that just shows you a testament of, of how he works and and everything, and, and how he's how he's blocking out there is is for him from him paying attention in meetings, and he's you know his willingness to do it. It's good to see, and that's what. That's what a team does, right? And it's not about a bunch of individuals, it's about the team. Justin Hardy is essentially a specialist. Um, how, how much value does that have? In today's NFL, you, you know, the more things you can do, the better, but he essentially is a specialist on special teams. So when you're making the final cuts, how do you value that? Well, for me or for the entire team? From your perspective. From my perspective, um, you know, he has one kickoff, he makes one tackle. He has one punt, he's in front of the stand and in front of the returner to force a fair catch. So for me, a guy like that, I think he's top five in this league. If, you know, I, I do, I think he's a he's a pro bowler in my, in my opinion. And, and uh, he, he does a really, really good job um, for us. He takes a leadership role in the room. Um, so he, he's done a heck of a job and done everything we asked him to do, you know, so. Josh Martin is one of your guys, three years here. Do you see shades of him with Jacob? I do. I, I joke around with him all the time. Like, you know, any any comment that Jacob makes or something, I'd be like, your brother never said that. You know, <laughs> or something, something like that. So I'm always ribbing about his brother, but they're both very similar. Both love ball. Both both are smart guys that that uh, play their butts off all the time. And, and uh, you know, it, it was a joy to coach Joss, and it's a joy to coach this kid, too. He's Jacob's awesome. With, with Cager, with him moving to tight end, does that change anything that – he's maybe able to do on special teams or? or no, not necessarily. I think it's it goes back to the same thing I, I said earlier, like any any position that's a three, four, five guy or whatever it is, you know, they're going to be asked to play special teams and, and the guys that have the most value on offense and defense and on special teams combined will will be here. And, and you know, that's that's how this league goes. And and Cage has done a nice job. He's he's I think he's um, you know, he's working just like everybody else and, and uh, his willingness to do it um, has been good. So I think, you know, we'll see how it all shakes out at the end. Going back to Justin Hardy, what makes for a great kick punt cover guy, just a great special team player? You know, going back to Tasker and Buffalo and then obviously um, uh, the guy up in New England. Slater. Yeah, Slater. And what? And you played for almost ten years in the league mm -hmm. as a kick punt type cover guy. What makes the the great ones great? Want to. Want to. That's what it all comes down to. Do you? Are you going to say that that guy, when I have a forty yard head start, can I can I get singled by that guy? And I tell my guys all the time, there is absolutely no way in hell a guy should be able to block you when you got a forty yard head start all the time. And it's all that mindset that they've got to have in that room. And you know, I continuously try to preach on that, teach that, because that's what I believe in. You know, I really don't. If they're not doubling you, then something's wrong. You need to beat any single that you got, and that's how that's how we coach them. And uh, <clears throat> Hardy's one of those guys that he's got that right mindset, and he you know he plays 150 miles an hour on every snap and never stops and things like that. You know, does he have some things to improve? Absolutely, just like we all do. But you know, I think he's done a fantastic job, and what we've asked him to do here since he's been here. 
the fact that you played special teams and you know were an excellent special teams player that that knowing that mentality firsthand really kind of get that to the guys like how to approach it you know that's something that you'd have to ask a player on what they think of that but <clears throat> i think that that's you know you you coach i think you coach how how you see it you want it done and you know, I try to coach my guys to go to play as hard as they can for as long as they can, you know, and I want them to be physical and I want them to be tough as hell and I want them to be smart and doing the right things. And if you have a group like that that just lays it on the line all the time and they work together and they study and they prepare and they talk and they communicate, then you're going to have a good group, you know, and if you and if you don't, then then that's on us as coaches. You know, that's that's what I believe in. Right. What do you do this time of year to cut down on the penalties that you guys had? Just over preach it, over teach it. Um, you know, continually try to harp on the the specifics of, of what's going to get penalties, what's not going to get penalties. Anytime we're correcting tape, you know, we'll always point that out. So you know, that's a big emphasis for us this year. How valuable are these joint sessions going to be coming up against Atlanta and then the Giants? I, I think it's going to be huge. You know, because you get to see them against other guys and and. Uh, you know, just like all these preseason games, they're just practices against other people. You know, you get used to working with each other and everybody knows each other's moves and stuff like that. But once you get get into other guys that you haven't studied before, like you can't pull out tape and watch these guys, you know, when you're when you're practicing against them, it's, you know, you really see what your skill set is and, and where your eyes are and things like that and stuff that gets you in trouble. And it'll be a good gauge where we're at on, on, on all phases, you know, to see how we, we stack up against these guys. You know, they have a lot of talent.